Hello and welcome to another Friday rant. Today's Friday rant is on rioting and looting. As you may know, if you've read my blog or listened to any of my videos, that for almost two years now, the house next door has been vacant. And so I've been dealing with um, a string of squatters who have gone into the house and lived there, usually doing drugs and, and fornicating, um, at least as per the, the people who've been in the house have told me. And um, October 2019, they set the house on fire. And I called the fire department early enough to prevent most damage. But the, the big point here is, is that we have a lot of lawlessness. But that's normal. People sometimes forget how most historical wealth was accumulated. And I forget who said it. But behind most um, wealthy people... There's a crime. Now, the people who have it now, I'm not saying they're criminals necessarily, although some of them may be, but most of them who have had money and who were born wealthy have achieved it by doing something that is without virtue. For example, the East India Company was a company that actually acted as if it was a country and went about um, going into countries like everyone complains the United States does, taking the resources, enslaving the people, and then enriching their pockets. And if you don't believe me, go pay attention to those characters in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Everyone hates them, including the pirates, because everyone knows they're basically a an incorporated group of pirates that are authorized because they pay off governments. And there were other pirates who did that, but what we have is a series of lawlessness that is excused behavior because a government will sanction it or because a government permits it. This was common back in the pirate days. Um, governments would offer pirates letters of mark, which were uh, authorizations essentially to go and plunder enemy ships with the understanding that uh, you don't mess with the ships that fly our flag. And then people would be rewarded for this. Um, some of the most uh, famous of these include individuals, uh, British men like Walter Riley, um, who uh, would sink Spanish ships in the um, European area under a letter of mark from England, and the Spanish court recognized him as a pirate. Um, at one point, the Spanish ambassador, when Walter Riley was there, um, refused to stay in the courtroom because Walter Riley was in the uh, in the throne room. So. If you think about it, historically, most of the people who have amassed wealth, even those who don't have it anymore, got it by rioting, looting, and stealing. Um, some of them built people out of things, and, and a lot of these people who have realized they've done something wrong have tried to fix it. For example, John Huntsman Sr., the one who's dead, amassed most of his fortune by making styrofoam clamshell boxes for the McDonald's Corporation, and then established a cancer institute in order to, I guess, atone for his sins, or because he realized what the problems were with the invention that had made him rich and wanted to ameliorate the conditions that he had caused without sacrificing, of course, the money, because nobody wants to sacrifice the money. The bigger problem, then, is when we get into something that Frederick Bastiat refers to in his book, The Law, when he talks about legal plunder. And that is where individuals who are evil or evil-minded or even just selfish, which let's face it, most of us are, end up in a position of power and then use that position of power in order to rape, pillage, plunder, and enslave others. It's the kind of thing that the founding fathers in America wanted to avoid because they knew that the great families of Europe, of which there are only like seven left, had amassed their fortunes by uh, at the expense of the people they were supposed to serve. And some of these families were, were evil, the Borgias, the Medicis. Um, and some of our families contain, well, I don't know that the families are evil, but they definitely contain evil people. The Kennedy family, for example, I'm not saying every member of the Kennedy family was evil, but they're certainly not poster children for virtue and morality. That I can say with certitude. And so what they wanted to do was establish a nation in which it was possible to amass wealth, to enrich yourself without doing it through immoral and illegal and unethical means. Because they had watched Britain 
create an empire, take over the world, plundering, looting, and enslaving people from sea to shining sea. And the British will talk about how, at one point, the sun never set on the British Empire, but that's because they went places that the British had no business being. And they went there for resources. But of course, America is the only evil country because we're out going out there and fighting for oil. Next time we go to war for oil, let's get some oil. Um, and so they understood that with all of its flaws, faults, and potential pitfalls, capitalism was the only economic system that made it possible for individuals to amass wealth without committing crimes. That doesn't mean that people who are capitalists don't commit crimes, but that not only could you get rich without, commi without committing a crime or being an evil person, you could actually get rich by providing something that served your fellow men. And you can see that now. You can go on TV and watch commercials about, uh, uh, there was this moon pod thing I just saw. And oh, this is not to advertise products. These are actual examples because I haven't been paid to endorse these products because I don't own one and I'm not going to buy one. But somebody bought one in order to do this. There's the, the teeter inversion table that he created so that people could ha be relieved of back pain. Um, the Under Armour Corporation. Uh, and, and not that, that these corporations are virtuous and, and of good report and praiseworthy in every, in every way or that every member of those companies is good because we're all humans and we all have flaws. And since all corporations are made of humans, the corporations will also, by definition, be flawed. But even Amazon has gotten wealthy during the pandemic by providing a service to many people. It's providing us with entertainment, with access to goods without having to leave our houses that has allowed people to remain safe. And they have gotten wealthy by providing something that serves us. There's nothing criminal about it. And they do some stuff I don't like. They didn't enslave anyone. They didn't plunder anyone. They didn't steal things from anyone. <clears throat> they have found a way to provide a service that people are willing to pay for. Netflix. They've found a way to provide a service that people are willing to pay for. And I forget what the black and white movie was that I was watching last night because I didn't actually catch the beginning of it. But it's an old black and white movie on movies, uh, Turner Classic movies. And he was an, an old, fat, uh, rich guy was explained to three younger um, gentlemen, one of whom was Cary Grant, that if you want to get rich, find a way to give people what they want and at a cost where you profit. So basically, capitalism, if done correctly, is a win-win. Rioting is never a win-win. Looting is never a win-win. Plundering is never a win-win. And slavery has never been a win-win scenario. Capitalism can be. It isn't always, but it can be. By piracy, slavery, these are not circumstances that are ever a win-win for the unfortunate recipient of the action. If you are attacked by pirates, if you are captured by slavers, there is nothing good in that for you. There might be for those who took you, but it is definitely not a win-win. And so I, I get upset watching the looters and rioters not be criticized because the people who should be criticizing them are getting wealthy off the fact that they are looting and rioting. Remember years ago when Nancy Pelosi spoke ad nauseum about the assault weapons ban and brought an AR-15, albeit slightly disassembled, to the floor of the House of Representatives? It's apparently okay for her to bring a gun, but if you want to go inside the Congress building, you can't even build a, bring a sealed bottle of water. I don't know why they ban water, but they don't even let you bring in water, which is why I've never been in the Capitol building. I would not be surprised if her husband bought a bunch of gun stocks because Ruger, Smith & Wesson, and a few other American companies skyrocketed in price immediately afterwards because of the ban and people went out and panic bought guns. I think that if you tie this together, they're letting it go because somehow they are getting wealthy. They are looting and plundering and enslaving people. And we're not slaves in the classic sense. We're not uh, plundered in the classic sense. And we're not being looted in the classic sense, except that how long have you been stuck in your house? How long have you gone without a paycheck? And do you live next door to a house 
or a part of town where you're afraid that at any point someone living there who may have no right to be there breaks into your house and takes stuff from you. Until that house became vacant, I did not have a security system on my house. I do now. I also didn't have a smartphone. But because of that, I have had to make changes to provide protection from the rest. Because I have to protect my wealth and spend some of mine to protect mine from them. Because the government won't. That's my problem with rioting and looting. Is we have unalienable rights to life, liberty, and property, which is the pursuit of happiness. Because almost everyone, if you ask them, will, sorry, I'm chewing gum, will equate wealth with happiness. They'll say money can't buy happiness, but it's more fun to cry in a Maserati than in a Mazda. They're not wrong, except that I don't find a Maserati or a Mazda appealing. I'm a Saturn man, but that's my pr preference. And they're not flashy cars by any extent or stretch. The people who should be protecting us from them are not. They are uh, derelict in their duty to protect our right to pursue happiness through the acquisition of, in doing things with our life that we want to that enrich us. Whether we're talking about money or just um, pleasures, experiences, um, or activities that enrich us, they are robbing us of our opportunity and our ability to properly enrich our own lives. And then they're bribing us with our own money. Here's $2,000. I mean, $1,400. I mean, four. I mean, never mind. There will probably be no stimulus checks. Let's, let's face it. They are not interested in you. Very few, if any, elected political officials actually give a flying pinwheel about you. They are, bar none, their own favorite constituent. And they are there to, because they believe that by being there, they can make things better for them. That's true of activists. It's true of looters. Looters are, and rioters are not there because they care a pinwheel about you. They are there because they want their 15 minutes of fame. They want their voice heard. They want to achieve. And a lot of them have done it in order to elevate their status so they can run for office and then enslave you to the laws that they pass, the conditions that they pass, just like Bastiat warned. That the, because of legal plunder, because you can make it legal to do stuff, even if it's immoral, they will pass laws that allow them to take things from you. And that is not in your service, even though they may claim it, and it is not virtuous, even though they say it is. Only capitalism, conscientiously practiced, makes it possible to become wealthy by doing virtuous things and serving others. Now, you may serve yourself, but all of the things I have mentioned specifically are because they are win-win for the purchaser and the seller, and that's a proper transaction. When I go to the store and buy something, it's because I'm willing to pay what they ask for what they are offering. There's a model ship back there on the wall. I had that made because I was willing to pay someone to make it. Those bookshelves that you see my books on are because it was cheaper to buy them from someone else than it was to make them. And because when I moved into this house, I had stacks and stacks of boxes of books. And rather than spend the time making them for one third the price, I could go down to RC Willie and buy them and have them set up. And they're not as good as I would have made them, but they're a fair value. They're definitely better than some of the alternatives like Ikea. Not to diss on Ikea if you like them. I happen to find their materials to be in the Walmart category of quality. There is nothing virtuous in using the adversary's means to achieve the, the father's plan. And there are people out there who are telling you that because a thing is flawed, it is not virtuous at all while they do things that are not even virtuous on the surface. They may call it a cantaloupe, but that does not make it a melon. And calling yourself virtuous, a public servant, or a righteous, or a social justice warrior does not mean that you are social, justice, a warrior, or righteous. Sometimes you're a pirate. Sometimes you're just a jerk. Most of the people who are going to riots and going to loot are not there to speak up. 
They would be here in Vegas if the Golden Knights won the Stanley Cup. Not because they care about the Knights, but because they care about an opportunity to riot, throw a ruckus, and try and steal stuff. Because let's face it, stealing is easy. Earning money, that's hard. And that's my Friday rant. Good luck, work hard, and may you reap what you sow, whatever that may be.